What's up, guys? This is Heiss. Today we're playing Railroad Tycoon 3 live with my buddy Layton. Welcome, Layton. Hello. Hello. How are you? How are you? I am good. How are you? Oh, doing pretty good. Um, <laughs> as we discussed <laughs> just before this, um, presumably Layton's game name is Farty McNosen Fartin Faces. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I, I think JP Morgan is my avatar and the farty McNose and fart and face and just came to me in, in true, in true, beautiful, ancient game fashion. The game has crashed because I tried to maximize it. Oh, God damn it. So give me a second. <laughs> please, please hold. Holding. Please hold while, uh, while the rest of the, uh, the folk show up here on the stream. Welcome everyone. The Halo Trolls, Storm and Charlie, Ghost Games, Northern Isle. The Rare Tycoon 3. Yeah, yeet. Yeah, let's see if I can so, get it to relaunch here. According to Wikipedia, this game launched on October 27th, 2003. So we are coming up on the 19th anniversary of this game. Christ. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This game is as old enough to have bought a project car and sold the project car before they got it running. <laughs> it's very, uh, very specific of you. All right, it looks no, like the uh, yeah. the stream is back up. What? No, Brett? No, Brett's on travels. <laughs> yeah. So it's just us us two idiots today. Yeah, we are only half of one idiot Just today. half we an idiot today. today. Yeah. Over. Yep. All righty. Um, we can do east of Mississippi. That's, it's modern era. It starts at 1980, and it's just like southeast, east coast, USA. I'm not um, sure if we've done that one. We have not. I don't think we've done that one. And it's modern era, so that's something different. Um, <laughs> Can we run 10,000 car long trains? Uh, unfortunately, we cannot be eight, that percent. Eight no. cars? Just eight, eight cars. cars. Got it. Is Sold. All right. I guess we're doing this shit. <laughs> cool. Alrighty. Sounds good. A couple uh, more folks hopping on. Andrew Beeman, welcome. Ghost Games. 3900 class. William Grantham. Frame rate I believe 24. you need to click a little thingy so it become, goes from being red to green. Oh, I have to do that. Yeah. Tunk. I have to ready oop. Did Carl? Alrighty. Did Carl say that the uh, the game's ready to play? Carl. That kills people. Alrighty. Click start. Because I would tab out to try it. God damn, Carl. I would tab out to try and post a notice about the stream, but unfortunately, um, <laughs> that might crash the game again. So maybe I'll try and do that by, from my phone here. Let's see. Eastern half of the United not, States. Can... I did if, not. If you, if you need to duly um, advertise your, your wares. I do you need to do that. Yeah. Well, we can, but I can also just poss possibly... Do it on my phone real quick. Okay. Although that is challenging. Let's see. If, do I open YouTube and it says I'm live? No, it doesn't. Why would it say that? I don't know. Between us, we have like a combined nine years of engineering school. We should be able to figure out how to do this. Right. Something like that. Nine years? I thought you had six yourself. No. Uh, well, or did you only half, do five and a half? I okay. Took one of those semesters off to goof off in Europe. Well, you know, that's fine. All right, and content notifications, paste. And we say some mean things about Carl that I can't repeat yet. Okay, the notice has been posted. Okay, the eastern half of the United States is ripe for the financial picking. There's much money to be made here and lots of ways to make it. Your task is a simple one. Be the player with the highest personal net worth at the end of 15 years, and the gold is yours. Uh, something tells me Leighton's going to win, because that's how this game's played. Let's see. I seem to recall you doing some, you having some um, stock-based bullshit uh, in the past, so. Um, it is not letting me type a company name. It is pulling up things. Mm. I'll let you have the flying pig. Okay. Uh, um, you wanna? That's really. I'm trying to top my logo. <laughs> what is the game doing? 
I don't know. I guess I don't get a company name. Hey, dude, you gotta go to start new company. Uh, you should watch the stream. It's not letting me type in the company name box. Okay, well, let me pull it up on my phone. Are we gonna have to complain to the manufacturers of this game? We are. I'm just gonna be the Eat Railroad. Just, just presume eat. what the rest hey, of it is. Hey, you know, you got the Florida Lee there, so it, there's like an Eat the Rich vibe going on with eat. that. For the French Revolution fans in the room. All right, what do we got going on? Where, where should I build a railroad today? It's something to do with where Choo Choo go. Yeah, what well, Mongo no, no where Choo Choo go. Mongo only pawn in game, game of life. life. Are bullets, bullets. Starting out building in the metropolis that is Peoria, Illinois. No, <laughs> that's that's where everybody dreams that they're gonna go. Peoria. Can I get? Oh fuck me! Oh, am I gonna do this shit all steam? I'm gonna hamper myself. I'm gonna do this all steam. <laughs> You're gonna do it all steam. All good, steam. Good lad. Team of the challengers gobbles. Oh, there, there is a challenger. So you can still buy a challenger in 1980 in this video game. Challenger. I love Maybe. it. Okay. Um, I don't really know what the right move is to do, but it seems that there's lots of traffic at the end of presumably the Mississippi River down here. So we're, uh, we're just going to do that. You're going to build down in New Orleans where Brett is right now? Uh, no, I'm building out of Mobile. Maybe that's Mobile, the Alabama. Maybe that's is that the Missouri? I don't know East Coast things. No, no, no. That that is the Mississippi River. No, wait, no. That's Mississippi goes to New Orleans. I don't remember what Mobile, what river comes out of Mobile. I don't know. Usually, like my experience with driving through like Mississippi is being very eager for the sign, or sorry, driving through Alabama is a sign that says "Welcome to Georgia." So You've offended the, the one viewer on the stream that's from Alabama, presumably. All right, then. They can, them and their cousin and wife can fight me. All right. Got some stations put down. Oh, we're still putting down water towers. 1980. Don't you worry, folks. Hey, man. There's no differentiation between a water tower and a sand tower in this yeah, game. Bandan, you should know exactly what Brett's doing down in New Orleans. Oh, God. Then, we get the double D. Them DEA people. Dear. God, you can still get an F3. Yeah. But you can't get the big boy? That's stupid. Yeah. I'm not... You can still buy a fucking GG1 in this that game. That is... So. This does not compute. Apparently, Altoona's still cranking them out. You know what? It's a Flatland Railroad. We're going to get a GP7, and we're just going to slug it, make it do all the things. Go. Go, train, go. Look at all that. We're hauling diesel fuel. <laughs> but Leighton's in the lead. Surprising no one. Well, you know what? Annoyed by my performance. We got one choo-choo going, okay? I started out in Peoria, man. That's where the money is. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> now, I'm trying to get, now I'm trying to get uh, connect Springfield to St. Loser. And uh, Saint Loser. Right now my, my glorious challenger with elephant ears, which I, I think is just a fantastic touch. It's just a vibe. One carload of... Sorry, 60% of a carload of mail, so... Nice. Really doing a lot with all all them drive wheels. Oh man, I am totally you I am precision scheduling this shiznit. Beautiful. Alright, I've built a Y. Tell me why. No love for Weird Almark? No. No love. Oh my god! Nineteen eighty one. Now we can get a not standard gauge locomotive to come play. Yes. Yes. How the fast does it double. go? Yes, it goes as fast as the game lets it. Well, you know, the game will, like, let it go, um... It, go, it says it can do 100. Yeah, but there's, like, some, like, ultra-super-futuristic shit from circa 2003 that'll supposedly do, like, 200 miles an hour, so... Ah. It's not... Yeah. It's not totally maxing out the limit. You know, it was funny that you messaged me earlier asking to play this game because I randomly, while I was working today, um, started listening to the soundtrack. 
It's like, you know what? Murder Tycoon 3 soundtrack sounds lit right now. I mean, it always sounds lit, but it was funny. That banjo, man. Gets you every time. Uh, let me issue more shares. I don't have any money. <laughs> no one cares about you not having any money. Um, not having any money. I need. Also, apparently, my challenger is numbered four thousand six. So that's, that's not how that works. That that's not how that works either. But you know, <laughs> apparently, there is no articulation in the centipede tender. So Indeed. I'm not really thinking that they were. You know, going super hardcore here with respect to accuracy in the uh, in the avatars. Considering honestly, if we think about it in like a very abstract sense, this is like kind of like an idle clickbait game. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, I mean the trains go back and forth, and you can pay to increase the trains. And God damn it, Heist is currently in the lead. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you I'm being smart about something. Mm, doubt. I bought a, well, I don't know. I bought a meatpacking plant in Peoria, Illinois. Look at you but buying was... industries once again. Well, you know Butthead. what? This is industry tycoon. <laughs> it is industry tycoon. Yeah. <laughs> is there anything where you can not buy industries? Because that seems to be the uh, the move for you. And it seems uh, to be lame. The, the Chinese version. Like the Mao's Revenge, whatever the fuck that one is. Mm. Yeah, you can't buy shit in that. And I've never been able to get gold on that one. So <laughs> There it is. Yeah. JM764 confirms that the fastest is 300 mile an hour for the E88 in 2050. Oh, man. <laughs> 2050. It's so far away. It is so far away. I've got one GP7 that's just killing it on the freight stuff it's actually hauling a weird mixed train right now but it's running all it's my it's my one choo choo we're, we're just gonna have one choo choo and i want to buy industries but they're it turns out they're expensive so yeah although honestly like i don't know to buy like an entire like meat packing plant for a million and a half dollars like see that's pretty cheap even in 1980 i see what you, i see yeah. what you're saying right there yeah, like these values, I don't know, the numbers are all made up. I mean, it, we're playing whose line is it anyway with trains. It's, it's who's, game, whose train line is it anyway? Yeah, in a game pre-Iraq war, so. That's <laughs> true. <Sure. laughs> Issuing bonds so I could buy this meat meatpacking plant. We're doing it. Oh. I'm, pl I'm playing the Layton Simulator. Layton Simulator 1981. Layton Simulator 1981? I don't know. We have similar drinking habits. You just need to be, like, more neurotic and have more model trains on the wall. Oh, that would help. Mine are not on the wall. You should do that, man. When are we building the SN3 Empire? Uh, when I own a house. Mm. So never, I think, based on how things are going. <laughs> I don't know. Just wait for Jimmy Booth to move to Denver and he'll, like, convince all of us to convert to SN3. Beautiful. Can we get Railroad Slang 101? I mean, that, mm, uh, maybe. <laughs> There's some Railroad Slang that can't be used. There's Particularly not over the radio, Layton. I have... You know what? This is going to have to be a story time. <laughs> you know, at some point, we're just going to need to do, like, a brief, like, five-minute story, story time videos where we explain some of this shit. Like, you've done so far two videos referencing limes being thrown. But you, we have not formally explained how limes happen. That's true. We have not formally explained how I almost caused a bar fight by throwing a lime at you and missing. Yes. I know. And we're not going to do that now, because that is worth its own video. <laughs> yeah, on your channel, maybe. I don't, Spoilers, know. I don't have have a YouTube one. channel. I have one video from, like, the intro to Mines class of Finding Food and Golden that one of your videos one of your people found and was like what the fuck is this shit and i'm like it's for a freshman class it means <laughs> nothing boxcar the husky uh, all you heard about sn3 is that i own sn3 and eventually we'll build an sn3 layout most likely but um 
I've got like a six foot chunk of layout uh, that I did a video on maybe two months ago, maybe ish, three months ago. It's yours is from Sam Furukawa's layout, right? Yes. I, I have. Okay, so during the 2017 Narrow Gauge Convention, I was in. Uh, I was helping the late great Fred Oster run his layout, and. Um, I did get to see Sam Furukawa, but I didn't get to, like, actually talk to him. So, all I can say is, damn, that guy can fucking build shit. Hey. And he's a fantastic photographer and videographer, so. All the skills we wish we had, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, I've got two trains now. And shit, one of them's out of water. I'm buying stock, presuming that I'm going to make money. Stonks. Stonks. I, 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 apparently, I'm just running diesel fuel trains. That is what I'm doing by running tracks over the levee. I Should do know, HO right scale? Now. No, I sold all my HO scale. I don't want HO scale. You have a layout in an apartment. You probably also don't have a million guitars taking up all more than your fair share of space, uh, and you're worried about pissing off your significant other. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, yes, I'd have a layout in the apartment. Yeah. I was going to have a layout in the living room, and then fiancé appeared, and then lo, the layout got moved to the garage, where it got slightly larger, but... Well, you know, details. Yeah. Details. I think it's time for another choo-choo. It is time for another choo-choo. It's just going to be know... a local. Uh, okay, I'm now connecting to Chicago. Sweet home, Chicago. By the way, we should do Blues Brothers as a movie night. Oh, that'd be fun. It's a spectacular movie. We got both both kinds of music here. Country and Western. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Tell us more lime-based historical facts. Yes, Mystery Citrus does have a background. It wasn't just us being... Si I mean, it was mostly us being silly, but there was a story for precedent for it. So, you know. We'll explain later. We'll explain later. O scale? No, I I have S scale. I have an SN three four ninety one and a three forty six. I'm still looking for twenty though. No, I buy one. S scale, truly the ideal scale, done by nobody. Done by no yeah, pretty much done by nobody. Yep. Although, what the fuck? Hornby today announced that they're doing. They announced like a whole line of British TT gauge. Okay. Shit. One to one twenty, and it's just like what the. Pico announced that they're doing track and structures and some kits and shit, and now Hornby announced that. It's like, damn, if you did, if you people did anything Great Western, I might actually buy something. <laughs> but for all you, like, BR and East Coast Mainline geeks, they've got some, like, A3s and A4s for you, weirdos. Um, it's, I'm, my assertion is that TT gauge is, in fact, the, the ideal small scale. Not the ideal scale, because that is truly SN3, but not everybody has room for that. That's fair. SN3 runs on its own track. It's S scale, three foot gauge. It's actually the proper gauge. It's not like ON30 or anything like that, where it runs on another gauge. Yep. It is uh, 1 64th, which works out to 3 sixteenths of, uh, of an inch to the foot, which further proves that Americans will use anything but the metric system. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sign of Calhoun. Uh, thank you for being a conductor for four months. But yeah, I need to do a full on Tom Scott. I'm here at the Colorado Road Museum video next to truly rip off his formats. No, that, that would be funny, but I think a smidge unnecessary. I'm here at the Colorado Air Museum with employee myself. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're the wiener here. Fuck you. How are you winning? Oh, sorry. That's going to have to get whistled out. Except we don't have post production because this is live. Yeah. Yeah. Remember what I told you beforehand? beforehand? It's fine. Oh, you only said for 30 seconds. I did. It's true. But you don't need to say fuck every 30 seconds after that for every 30 seconds. No, but you did just say it. <clears throat> I know. I'm just giving you crap. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> measure using animals before using tents. Yes. At what does at what point does it stop becoming a model railroad and it does it become narrow gauge? Um, if you ask the FRA, twenty four inches. Yep. And on, I think that was like an ICC thing too, because if you look at a lot, um, like if you go to like Lakeside Amusement Park in Denver, otherwise known as the park. The park. We go the to the park. park. The park is closed. The park is closed. Yeah, it's at like twenty two and a half inch gauge, which was a Cagney thing. Which my assertion is that was just to get around like ICC or state level regulations because usually anything below two feet is not considered actually a train. Unless you're the Romney Height and Dimchurch in England, which had armored trains with machine guns on it in the Second World War, but. and was 15 inch gauge. That's a key thing to mention there. Well, you know. I'm just That's making just an army of GP7s. I'm being a sad short line in the 1980s. Okay, on your tracks. <laughs> Too soon? Pretty much. Trains are breaking down. It's probably because I'm not putting down enough servicing depots. I mean, that would probably be an indicating factor. No, I don't know. Okay, there's a rubber there. Okay, it's like Chicago. Why is there rubber coming from there? All oh, right, because there's a port, but there's no port there. So why is it just this one random ass warehouse is producing rubbers in Chicago? Why why am I not producing my meat packing plant does not make any money? <laughs> you chose poorly. Apparently. Mm, I'm gonna issue some more stomps. I'm gonna buy this tire factory. Last year it produced 0.7 of a load, made 19 kilo bucks. Uh, there's some iron there. This guy's making steel. Oh, she isn't it. I should buy that, but I don't have the money. Can so you sell we're... industries? Yeah, you can. You can. For half the price, vomit. It is, in fact, a scam. That is a scam. No matter how profitable it is, it's a fucking scam. But it made no money. It doesn't make money. How do I make it make money? Presumably, it needs things to be transported to it. Well, you know, that's where you should build a railroad. Ah, well, I'm going to make a dedicated cow line. We're bringing back the stock rush, boys. Just going to stick this station out in the middle stock. of nowhere. Okay, now stock, move, stonks. Yeah, move the, st stonks. We're, we're, the stock rush to the stonk rush. See how that works? Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. <laughs> Meridian, I'm, I'm stalking a railroad right now, and I really wonder why you haven't connected Jacksonburg to Vicksburg. Or, sorry, Jackson to Vicksburg. Because that's nothing important over there. I don't know. Well, it is running towards Mobile with a caboose. So we are really just nailing it right now. Yeah. You know you can set it with like a minimum. Oh. Number. Well, that would be helpful. Yeah. Ice is still in the lead with 659,000. So you're doing something right. Apparently. They're increasing my salaries. I need to refinance this shit, isn't it? Okay, go down to the St. Loser. I'm going to buy this thing. I'm going to buy this thing. Oh, come on. Just let me buy the thing. I know I don't have the money for it. Just let me buy it. That's never worked out poorly in American history. Just buying a bunch of stock. It seems to be the thing to do. Yeah, something, something you shorted and made money off of Norfolk Southern's <laughs> poor decisions. I did. That felt, I didn't make that much money. It did feel like that was my one little bit of vitriol against the railroad. They're going to screw the guys. Guess what? <laughs> going to attempt to make money off of you. Why won't... Yep. The, why is there... The, the station is in the middle of nowhere. Why is there sugar being brought to it? Bring me the cows. I don't know... Life's hard. Maybe the cows want sugar, but I thought that was horses. I don't know. I'm not going to ask questions of the logic of this game. <gasps> Man, look. Congratulations. One of your trains has set a new speed record with an average of 56 miles per hour. <sighs> you were in public. Blazing fast. And premium to ride aboard this train. What will you name this, name this train? Um, Pudis. 
o t u s. Uh, Putis T I S. I can do that. I don't know. You can name it whatever you want. I just think Putis is funny. I tried to do two. I tried to do Putis, but it got weird when I tried to type a T. So it's just poo. <laughs> Quote of the evening, ladies and gents. I tried. I tried real hard, but it's just poo. Ooh, my automobile plant is making me money. It's almost like automobile hauling is like a bread and butter industry for the railroads because, surprise, surprise, cars actually kind of suck to haul anywhere. Indeed. Anytime they derail an auto auto rack, they have to bury the cars. Yeah, that's why there's a bunch of, like, 1970 Mustangs around Big Ten Curve. Just buried. Because that's... It's the thing to do with them, apparently. Oops, I accidentally bought a red devil. Well, that's that's fine. Hey, hey reject modernity. Embrace tradition. It's got a limpo blast pipe. All the foamers. Dot JPEG. Yeah. Did I you know of modern steam technology? Stop. Something, something, Porta in Argentina. Something, something. I don't know, man. Hey, I'm just going to throw this out there, like, from a thermodynamic perspective, as far as energy conversion goes, pretty much anything, <laughs> pretty much all the things involved burning something to boil water are astoundingly inefficient. Yep. Like, yeah, sorry, I hate, I hate to feed into, like, the, oh my god, everything must be electrified, nerds. But, yeah. It's, that's a, it's right. a efficient fair, it is a fair, it must be done. I should probably double track some of this crap. I mean, that would make sense. I should do like unto you, but... Yeah. I don't know, man. I just work here. Okay, that was the Iron Mines. It's the Iron Mines album on Cape Jaradao. should build down to Cape Jaradao. Oh my god, my meat packing plant made money last year. Ooh, you made money packing your meat? I just, wouldn't you like to know? Hey, man, I don't know what you do in your spare time. They're neutral about my performance, but they cut my salary. Those dicks. So, neutral about performance and give you less money. Sounds like corporate America? What, oh, damn it. No, I can only buy the Red Devil now. It's the only steam engine I can buy. You can no longer buy Challengers. You can no, buy, no longer buy Challengers, so I'm stuck with South African, 100%. This is totally standard gauge steam. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely it's standard gauge. 100 per fucking cent. How, how do you mean a brewery in New Orleans is not making money? What the fuck do they drink down to work? Bourbon. You need a distillery. Ah. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they don't got the money for the, for the, whatever the fuck. For the beer. You gotta just go straight to the hard shit, man. We're not converting peaches to nuclear power. How are they loading f loads of furniture at this stinking station? I don't know, man. Which stinking station are you at? The Baton Rouge in the middle of nowhere station they're put down to hopefully get do cows. cows. I don't know, man. There's some. <laughs> the economic engine in this game is like astoundingly advanced, but also makes no sense, so. Well, it's fine. I mean,. How's the live stream going? Well, looks like we got a fair amount of people on. Hopefully everyone's enjoying the the silly commentary. That's fair. <laughs> Rare Tycoon 2 leaves you stuck with the Penzi T1. Well, the T1's fun. Yeah. It's not in the game, though. It's not in this game, yeah. No. Oh, I went and rode the, uh, the loop on Sunday. 
You finally re you rode the loop de loop. Well, How it's the se second time I've ridden it. First time, right, right, uh, first right, time yeah, was cab ride with with the rabbi. Yeah. Um, Victoria and I went down and we got to see the fall colors, and of course uh, managed to pick the not steam train. But we got to watch the 111 go storming by, which was fun. 111 is a cool engine. It is a cool engine. Yeah. By the way, for those in the Denver metro area, George Fountain Loop Railroad right now, this time of year, I'm assuming... Uh, Very pretty. Very pretty fall colors. Yeah, definitely a good time. Yeah. Um, over the weekend, myself and my, my lovely lady went down and drove over Ohio Creek Pass, which is kind of railroad, but also kind of not because they graded it, but they never, like actually laid track on it and the aspens were absolutely freaking spectacular so nice. yeah down in the gunnison area and want to go from gunnison to crested butte the absolute longest way possible ohio creek pass the aspens are chef's kiss spectacular you know i probably shouldn't have nine million dollars in debt at an average interest rate of 10.2 percent probably very pretty also probably very busy yeah uh we booked tickets the night before because almost all the trains were sold out so they were sold out by the time we got there so definitely if you want to go yeah yeah book online yeah annoyed with my performance you jerks you bastards yeah also like within a week we're going to be at peak on the cumbers and toltec too and durango and silverton that's right so i mean DNTS, if you want to see colors, that is, I think, the best place to go. I've not been to the DNS during fall colors, but I know that CNTS during fall colors is beautiful. It is spectacular. I mean, honestly, the entire state from mid-September to mid-October is spectacular, so. No. You really can't go wrong, per se. You can no longer buy a GG1. Oh, but you can still buy a GP7. Sweet. Cool. Hey, man. You can still buy GP7s today. I mean, not new. Yeah, well. <coughs> progress. Mr. Rails. Beast proved that you can buy them used. <laughs> yeah, so when are we doing, like, the true Splody Boys with real life GP7s? Um, whenever the channel starts making lots of money, because it doesn't. <laughs> Whenever it makes explode locomotive money. Got it. Yeah. Well, I guess that's a new tier. You know, you pay 20 bucks a month. You too can contribute towards our ability to do absolutely stupid shit with uh, completely clapped out locomotives, including <laughs> Monopoly 2. I considered adding a uh, another tier for people who want to fund unsplodable cuz uh, we're going to we're going to need a, a couple additional things for props I think. Uh, so, you know. Is giant mustache is giant mustache money something that's currently not achievable? Well, I, I want Brett to dress as John Railroad soon, so we got to get him a conductor outfit. And I'm sure they don't make those just naturally in 65 tall. <laughs> no, that's fair. I think, bro, I, I, well, he's not 65 tall. He's not a fucking oil drum. But he's, <laughs> that is probably like a 42 gigantic. Yeah, a 42 XXX long. Yeah. Yeah, we need the big and tall store. Uh, and by uh, big and tall, we mean a Statue of Liberty sized. Yeah, basically. Am I excited for the game Railroader? Yes, I am. I'm very excited for Railroader, actually. That's going to be an awesome game. Does it come with Jack Daniels? or <laughs> One can hope. How does that work? It's the DLC. It's right. much like the D DLC for Sea of Thieves being um, bottles of rum. Why is the rum always gone? Why is the rum always gone? Give me more bonds. I want to buy the structure. They'll just give me credit. Bang. Why isn't my auto plant making me more money? Oh, probably because I should expand it. They won't issue me more stonks. <laughs> my, but my stonks! They want more stonks. Come on. Then I gotta do stonk buybacks and then complain I have no money. Oh, wait, sorry, that's United Airlines. Uh 
Well, it's taking a singular car of fertilizer with it. That's uh, that's pretty exciting. A singular car of fertilizer is that a euphemism? No, that is actually what the train's hauling. Ah. Uh. I'm finally in the lead with a net worth of 656,000. How dare you? My performance is highly annoying, apparently. My perform. The investors are excited about my performance. Ooh, are, ooh, are. I don't know how to make my personal net worth go up. It you involves playing the stock, mar stock market alongside being a company owner. It, the, the too much economic for brain yeah you got to buy more stonks but i've got lots of stonks i've got way more stonks than you well you do but you got to look at like you you are like way overdrawn dude well yeah but like that's the you i press the buy stock button asshole <laughs> the number that they care about on there is cash or is stonks and plus cash which, since your cash is negative, means that you have a total of 493 kilobucks. Oh, uh. shit. Dang it, malware bites. I, I don't want to know if there's an update. <laughs> Thoughts on Run 8? Would I ever play it on the channel? Um, I was so frustrated trying to get Run 8 to work as a game that I'm kind of apprehensive to try it, but um, maybe at some point. It's just like the amount, like I couldn't get servers to work. I should probably just sit down with somebody who knows it and it'll be fine. But it was like, it was very frustrating in the moment. And it was like, I don't need to spend hours trying to figure out a game with crap in infrastructure. Uh, and then, then at the same time, the, the gameplay is not going to be terribly interesting. I don't think because that, I mean, run eight is like a hardcore sim, which is cool. But it's also meaning it's a hardcore sim and it's digital stare at the scenery simulator for a lot of the game. At least last time I played it, it was. I know they've added a bunch of random stuff to like make it better or something, but it still doesn't feel that great, I wouldn't think. Mark, are you saying that your viewers would not absolutely be viewed to their screens looking at air brake needles slowly get closer to each other? <laughs> they might. My favorite standard gauge DNRGW en engine? I really think their 484s were pretty. I also think the L131s were badass. Okay, M64s or M68s? I don't remember the difference between them, okay? The I remember M6 seeing a picture of one and being like, ooh, that's pretty. Mm. The M68s were bigger, and they were like knockoffs of Missouri Pacific engines. Hmm. Because they were just like piggybacked onto their order. So Fujiyama in like the 60s made HO skill models of them, and they're just like basically the exact same model with slightly different details for those wanting your like fun 1960s HO scale brass facts there you go <laughs> late 1960s brass facts with Leighton Moreland this is the content that people come here for man indeed in the different Japanese builders anything that says built by Toby on it chef's kiss runs like a Swiss watch detail not up to modern standards but honestly i will take the lesser detail or just the bulletproof running quality <laughs> okay uh so leighton uh, someone commented on the live stream have been wishing to catch you live for a couple weeks we just had a, a train derailment off a bridge into a river locally and it made me think of you should i be pleased or not <laughs> uh, uh, f in chat question mark <laughs> that's hilarious i love it that's that's uh i've played enough drl valley to make a name for myself all right yeah. we're selling the meat packing plant to get out of the red it's not going well over here Grand. that's all i can say yeah they're mad at me i'm still in the lead kds says their favorite hey, was um the dnrgw 1700s what are those are those the 2102 s I don't know, man. I just know shit by their, like, 
letter slash number designation. Gotcha. We're doing well tonight. Open TTD multiplayer. Well, Open TTD is just it just suffers graphically. I think these days it is very fun, but. Jeez, anti matter twelve oh seven meat packing plant. You mean an ES and D passenger car? Nice. <laughs> well, we're not the ES and D. We're just the eat. Yep. So. so let's see. Uh, and we're not doing terribly well. Did I just get too many choo choos and I didn't get excited about running a railroad? And now there's trains that aren't making any money. So I'm pretty sure that's what's happening. Bought too many trains. To be excited for running railroad now you're not making any money man you're iowa pacific i am being iowa pacific the, the uh, 1700s of the 484s gotcha m64 uh those were the better looking i mean the m68s they were like bigger and meaner but the m64s i think just look a little bit more better proportion but that's just my personal opinion Okay, what's Hype's opinion on the Dinar GW C41 and C48? What you got going on, Hypes? <laughs> uh, the C41 is a neat choo-choo, but obviously obsolete pretty early because, uh, I don't know, they cut a bunch of them up and made them into K37s. Uh, the C48 is a beefier one, and I don't really know anything about the C48 other than it is a bigger C. They were the ones that stuck around till the end. I think the last, um, the last standard gauge steam was a C41 working on the Creed branch. I think it was 1151. I want to say. I don't know. I know I sold a key imports model of it at one point during my my past brass mongering days. Gotcha. It had a really interest. It had, a, it had an interesting spark arrestor on it. <laughs> Serious question: Who would you cast for an RGS comedy inspired by the recent videos? God, just to be like random train crew on the RGS. Steve Buscemi. <laughs> Yeah, everyone's Steve Buscemi, so they all can die. <laughs> How do you do it, fellow railroaders? It's Fargo, but instead of a wood chipper, it's a rotary snowplow. <laughs> that would be a treasure. I don't know if treasure is the word I would use, but it'd be something. Have I ever played Deep Rock Galactic? Yes, yeah, several times for Rock and Stone. Actually, on my Twitch, even. I haven't played it in a minute, but I ah, love that game. When will we do an official wheel reveal on Peaches? Uh, we're actually doing a study on with the way Peaches' drivers uh, interact with the wheel on Friday on the channel. I got ahead, I got two videos ahead this week today, guys. I'm feeling so proud. I have Wednesday's video done, and I need to up or po uh, upload it, post it, and all that. And then Friday's is uploaded, posted, ready to go. So it's like, hell yeah. You might even be able to take a nap. <laughs> Maybe. I've got to edit our uh, another episode of the Three Quarters of One Idiot, and those are hilarious to edit, but they take a lot of time because I want to do them well, and it's fun to add the extra comedy and the editing. Um, and and I spend a lot of time just laughing my ass off at us being idiots. So There's a lot of whistle, I notice, that goes on in them. So Yeah, there's also that. For the monetized videos, lots of F-bombs don't sit too well, so they get whistled. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, t the only thing I think of 1015 as far as the C41 is TRS 2004. Is that RGS Snow Story documented anywhere else, like in a book? I don't know. I'm sure it's in a book somewhere, but... Oh, man. Somebody, a boxcar, the Husky, brought up the Crab Tree Orchard and Egyptian. Are you familiar with that? No. It was the last, like, actual operating, not tourist railroad, bullshit steam railroad in the U.S., and it operated into the 80s. 
and there's just like pictures of some clapped out Mikado or something um, pulling trailer around flat car cars. That's fun. They shit a crown sheet on one of their engines and then they were like, and the steam engines are done now. Basically. So, Gettysburg before Gettysburg, which is kind of impressive. That is impressive. Ghost Games, I have played Faster Than Light. I've actually beat it with every configuration of every ship. I love that game. <laughs> also, apparently somebody says that my mic tonight makes me sound like Brett. Um, I don't know. This is the mic I tend to use most most of the time. So, it Still sounds like you, so. Yeah. Nasally, annoying, neurotic, too many model trains. <laughs> Something like that. Man, these trains are pulling lots of cars, but they're really not valuable cars. I, I'm sitting here just like b bouncing in and out of the red waiting for you to win. That's basically what's happening now. Mm. Yeah, meanwhile, I'm like, I'm going to pay down my debt. Pay down debt. Hmm. Only Amex at the end of the month. <laughs> Is that a little too close to home, Mark? A little bit. It's fine fine this is fine it's fine where does the oil come from oh right it comes from down there into the breach is fantastic i've never checked it out so look into that one of these days when i have something called time um different multiplayer game uh, astroneer i've played a bit of astroneer but not since they added the update that's great Ooh, somebody brought up a good brought up a good uh idea for um uh, the RGS movie, Danny DeVito. Oh, God. How do we fit Danny DeVito in there? <laughs> Danny DeVito shoveling coal. Like, that's that's all I can see is Danny DeVito is the fireman. And he's just like, like, they get stuck in the snow, and I can just picture Danny DeVito coming up with the coal scoop. And then there is something burnt to a crisp on it, and he's like, Hey, I found us a squirrel on, out in the woods, and I cooked it so we don't freeze to death. Like I can just, I can just picture that scene happening. Very, it's always sunny, like right here, right now. Yeah, I'm imagining it's always sunny. Danny DeVito going, and we're here for the whores. Where are the whores? It's, it's, like, it's not, it's not. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. It's always snowy in Rico. <laughs> <laughs> or it's always snowy in Ridgeway. Oh man, that is a. Oh god, yeah. Just use, just use the cast, and then it, of it's always sunny, and then. Just their same morals, and the, except they're drunk the whole time, and you've got the RGS nailed. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, God. It's like the RGS looking at the San Cristobal Railroad going like, they're new poor. We're old poor. As they <laughs> build the Goose. Pretty much. Yeah, this shit writes itself, dude. It really does. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Rare 101 clothing? That's not a bad idea. That'd be an interesting idea. These are overalls. The these Why are overalls. You? Everyone wears them. These are coveralls. Everyone who goes in the boiler wears them. Yeah. Why do you wear so many layers of denim? Because, because hot. And trying to kill you. Everything wants to burn you to death. Yeah, basically. Sumter yeah. Valley's neat. I've not been there. But Brian Cranston is the superintendent. I was thinking the, the superintendent should be, um, what's his bucket? My favorite. My favorite actor of all time. Not my favorite, but one of my favorites. What's his name? J.K. Simmons. Yes. <laughs> Me and the entire town of Ridgeway are going to go rescue those trains. Right. <laughs> no, no, no. The dispatcher is Patrick Waterburton. Shipcrafter, <laughs> Shipcrafter, it is not 491's original tender, and we don't need to, oh god, someone pull out the diagram, the flowchart of 491's tender is actually 499's tender, which previous to being behind 499 was behind 491, which previous to being behind 491 was 494, which previous to being behind 494 was behind 491, which previous to being behind 491 is 499's. 
So it's 4.99's tender, which means that it it one would presume it's 10.25's tender, but it's not because 10.25 had a Vanderbilt tender. So they found some other tender that they stole from another different C41 that they put behind the 4.99 when they uh, rebuilt it in the 1920s or 19 I guess 4.99 would be 1930. Um, so you tell me whose tender it is originally. Ah. Uh, it's 491s now. Yeah. I uh, The the K37s are a great example of the ship of Theseus. Because what truly is the essence of these engines because literally everything on them came off of something else. That's true. It turns out that parts is parts is parts, and you just do with parts what you need with the parts for. I was able to pay back a bond. Look at me. Getting spicy over here. Oh, man. I unfortunately sold all my shares of your company that's actually making money. That was a mistake. He chose poorly. Which also, for a movie we, re we reference a lot, we have not all watched uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark together. That's true. Especially <laughs> since apparently I'm Marcus Brody. You are Marcus Brody. He speaks a dozen languages, knows all the local customs. He will disappear. Uh, yeah, John Deerboy, I think you've got it right because we had 491 in big numbers from the museum, 499 in big numbers from before that, and then 491 in big numbers again underneath that, then 494 is a tramp stamp, little numbers, then 4091, and then 499. So yeah, that seems like the, the right version. They're very pleased with my performance. They like doubled my salary. Who are, who are? We're running steam in the 1990s and we're profitable. So, we're either Durango and we're either the Durango and Silverton, or we're doing something marginal right. The physicist is correct, Layton. You chose poorly. Is from the Last Crusade, not Raiders. Oh damn it! Sorry. Forgive me. The trains are starting to make some amount of money. Oh my god, I might be able to pay back another bond. Where is the button for that? There's too many buttons in this game. Ooh. Why is 278 on a bridge in Colorado? Because that's where the Forest Service displays it, right? Yep. It's owned by the city of Montrose, but the Forest Service was like, what this? is here that would make a cool display the answer is yes it does make a cool display and nobody can fuck with it but but the, the problem is is that nature still happens there so it got a decent it's got a, got a decent cosmetic about 10 years ago and now it looks like doo-doo again but. people donate enough can we have peaches and bumblebee scheme no jeff will oh. explode before oh. peaches gets painted in bumblebee I love Bumblebee, but Peaches does not get Bumblebee. There's only one thing with a trailing truck that gets Bumblebee, and that's 473. And yep. when you do, it has PTSD over going in a river, so we don't do that to it. <laughs> My favorite K36 from the DNS and the CTS is probably the 484, because it's the one that I first fired. I was going to say 488, clearly. Everybody well, loves it. Engine. It's not known as Satan. What are you talking about? Hail Satan, yeah. Yeah, guess what? Engines have reputations because despite the fact that they're all that in a class they're all theoretically the same, they're all somehow different and some of them are evil. <laughs> what would I put on 491 paint wise? Um, I would paint it I see a green locomotive, I'd paint it black. Um, paint it black with the uh, the silver trim the 1950s and the flying grand which is what we're gonna do so you know i ween how oh, circa 2014 of you right she's nice and dark green but it's impossible to keep clean and it's not really accurate like 
and she may have been painted green but we can argue about that we don't know for sure but the rest of the locomotive is not in the right appearance for it to be painted green so we should be interpreting our history correctly and it should be painted black well honestly if we're gonna like truly interpret her history she needs to be you know with the injectors the way she is we need to put the asbestos back on her and have the just like completely dog shit looking old jacket um with the flying grand paint job from the kennedy administration that <laughs> honor the engine yes 2014 491.jpg yes we all get the waistlines back we had in 2014 491 in the tunnel motor scheme? No. No. What do I think of the Kubrace and Toltec OI steam rotary snowblow? I thought it was great. I thought the charter was great. Leighton and I were both on that charter when they ran it. Yeah, it was like the last fun right thing now. that we did before the COVIDs. Yeah. I remember, like, literally, I went to Japan for a week and a half, and then I came back, and then the next weekend... I was on snowshoes watching a rotary snowplow go by, which was kind of a surreal experience. Riding bullet trains one weekend, going 200 miles an hour to... Yep, there's two K36s pushing a rotary at 5 miles an hour, and they're still slipping. Yep. I'm losing the uh, the whole uh, personal network thing. Losing it real bad. So, you know, it's fine. To uh, Mr. Sir Liv, hello to everybody's second favorite Gary Brannon. Layton, uh, am I in fact Kirkland Brand Gary Gannon or Gary Brannon? <laughs> that's that's going to be. A, uh, I'm stealing that for the next time we film one of those. And it's Kirkland Brand Gary Brannon because we're clearly original and we don't steal people's people's ideas. Casey says we need to play something cooler, Leighton. Does this, this, this make you sad? I mean, not wrong. We've been playing the same game for almost 19 years, so. I've got crappy GP7s pulling the world's most cursed consist of mail car, box car, passenger car, tank car, mail car, the USA 103. You mean the P42, sir? We can now be Amtrak. Hey, we're not Amtrak. We run right on time. Explodes. Why does extra cooling capacity equal tunnel motor? Uh, because uh, that is actually a whole video that I need to film still. But, you know, we'll get there. I've got like six videos filmed and ready to post that are like, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or not not filmed and ready to post filmed and ready to edit and that's not including the other like probably three or four uh three quarters of an idiot videos i'm so behind on the edits which is nice it's nice to have all the stuff in the can but it is also hard to keep track of it all so yeah mark how do you feel about going from being a signals engineer to being a video editor well it beats taking out the trash that's fair we haven't figured out a way not to do that, though, so... <laughs> true. True fact. <clears throat> Look at that. Train made money. I'm putting bonds back. It's happening. We're playing for 13 years out of 15. We got two years left on this shiznet. A.K.A. 1995, the year I was born. Thank God. Not thank God you were born. Thank God it's almost over. My suffering is almost done. Then we could start a new one. Well, Bandan's right. Tunnel motors had low air intake, sucked in cool air, and worked better for the SP and all the tunnels and shows the snow sheds. And the Grands, too. I mean, they were originally the Grands power, uh, yeah. I recall correctly. But I thought it was like a joint development between the Grand and the SP. Had Dusty's in the comments. He can correct us, I'm sure. But yeah, um, we did some serious load testing with EMD and the ST70s through the Stevens Pass Tunnel at BNSF. Um, and it turns out that um, the tunnel motors kick ass and most EMDs choke themselves to death when you have seven miles of tunnels. Almost <laughs> like it was designed for tunnels. Right. Man, the 3900 class asked a good question about 491's uh, scheme and it is scrolled away because we're too slow at answering questions. 
So feel free and post it again. <laughs> oh, I am a correct to modern to represent green painter. Yes, that is in fact correct. So for those following along at home, um, am I correct in thinking for anyone's current arrangement is too modern pre 1950s era to represent the green paint era? Um, yeah. So right now, 491, the way she is with the green jacket, whole conversation slash books could be written slash online discussion forums could be blown up as to whether or not she actually had the green jacket, but she, that would be good for her circa like 1933 to 1940. Um, because 1940 is when the Flying Grand happened. Um, I don't think she got that till 48 when she got major shopping. Um, but I, if I remember correctly, she got the doghouse in like 32 or 33, something around that era. So it's... But with the modifications that have been done to her, most visibly, aesthetically prominent one being the injector, um, the injectors. Yeah. Can you think of anything else, um, Heist, that puts her, you know, not in as-built condition besides the injectors and the doghouse? and Anderson, front-end, mechanical lubricator. Um, uh, Clone front-end? Yeah, the Cyclone. That's Anderson. Um, were they delivered with 6ET, or did they have A1? Actually, come to think of it, I think A1... Um, is what they were delivered with because it's the grand and they're cheap. Why would we bother with buying the new shit? So I know the 36s were um, bought with A1, not 6ET. Um, it's other little stuff with the way that the cab set up. and yeah, I don't know. That's not too stupid inaccurate, but it it would be easier to properly interpret it if it was painted black. Yeah. I mean, honestly, the biggest... The thing I always come back to is like... A, like from the 50 foot view is the injectors and that's literally just because the powers that be decided we're going to have these non-lifting injectors that don't fucking suck yeah um, it, because we had them and we didn't have her injectors or her injectors were ruined or something I don't remember correctly her injectors <laughs> were clapped out so wouldn't be surprised Sir Liv how much would, it, would one need to donate to the CRM to restore RGS20 into the ticket to Tom and Hawk guys um Lots. <laughs> I think I think Jeff would also probably die before we do that, as much as we all want to see the clipper ship on the tender. Management would have kittens, but I think if you showed up with a giant magnetic clipper ship, um, <laughs> it, it, it could be done. It could be done, although if you come up with like the artwork for like an actual like fridge magnet sized clipper ship, I would definitely buy that. I'm dumb enough to buy that. <laughs> Good. I was gonna say uh, somebody asked if we could if you could multi-track drift a Shea, and I'm pretty sure the or any geared engines, and I'm pretty sure the U joints are just not that cool. They would not cope with the the turns. If it was like gauntlet track, yes. Yeah, but not parallel tracks. Yeah. Like full on distinct yard tracks, but if you had like a triple gauntlet track for some reason, I bet you could do it. When did the narrow gauge stop running freight and passenger? Freight was 1968, and passenger was technically 1980 or 1981 when they handed the Silverton line over to Mr. Bradshaw. Yeah. When did the Grand start painting its coaches yellow? Um, Silverton branch stuff in the 50s, I think. Uh, yeah, 1950s, and there is a distinction there between like a one-stripe scheme and a two-stripe scheme and... I don't know. All I know is if you see anything, if you see the Blackstone, Jackson and Shark passenger car, H O N three passenger car, the three pack in the two stripe set, come up on Facebook. Those go for like six hundred bucks, because Blackstone, you make amazing products. We love what you make. Just make more of them. Um, yeah, they go for cubic dollars because two stripe is a thing. I don't know. Doesn't make sense, and I don't get it. So, do we know of any trains that ran on parallel tracks? Uh, I would say not intentionally. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't I don't know if anyone actually successfully doing that. Most trucks don't have the the rotation capacity to actually make that happen. Uh, for diesels, you'd rip the traction motor air ducts. The snubber wouldn't want to line up. Um, you'd break the truck shock. Like it, models can do it, but real I don't think there's there may be yeah. one or two real trains that can, but really really not that uh, yeah that likely. Um. Okay, somebody brought up an interesting thing. Um, the Alaska Railroad had ran mixed trains. I Just actually yeah. got tied on a mixed train connection with the Cumbers and Toltec in 2010. So the uh, uh, the San Luis, the now former San Luis and Rio Grande Railroad, um, ran mixed train between Alamosa and Antonito and Alamosa and Monta Vista. And the Alamosa to Antonito train was... Um, uh, connection with the Cumbers and Toltec. So I was able to do an ant me and my grandmother did an Antonito turn on a mixed train. Um, yeah, we got to the depot in Alamosa at like 8 a.m. Made it down to the Cumbers and Toltec. Us and like three other people got off the train. Transferred, you know, walked across the parking lot basically to the Cumbers and Toltec and then they did all their switching and shit, and by the time we got back, um, yeah, took the train the west rest of the way home, which was, honestly, I can say, riding between Antonito and Alamosa is an incredibly boring ride. But I can <laughs> still see it, so. And I got to be in an ex-Alaska uh, Railroad, um, ex-Santa Fe, full-length dome, whatever, and see a bunch of hopper cars of Perlite behind me, so. That is neat. That is a very niche experience. All right. 15 out of 15. We're almost done. We're almost there. My suffering almost ends. Almost. Put all my GP7s out of their misery. I don't know. I'm going to see if I can do a thing. You want to see me do an incredibly stupid thing? What's the Rio Grande's narrow gauge chili line? Oh, let's see. Yes, a merger. Yes, why not? Take us. <laughs> Takes over the eat. All right. I don't have a company. Thank God. Yes. Got, I have yeah, some dollars. Wait, fuck. Did I just make you win? No. What's your worth? <laughs> Nothing. 176 grand, dude. Okay. Your net worth is like still twenty times higher than mine. Yeah, when I go to when I go to the okay, cool. I want a gold. Um. Hey. Um. I also want a gold medal. Apparently, is what the screen stream is taking is telling me. But you know, that's fine. Hey, we're that's hilarious. Um, set up another one. Um, and then I'm gonna be right back. It's time for a restroom break. I'm going to insert some ads. So YouTube yeah. told me to. I don't know. Do you have elevator music, Mark? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll be right back.
Okay, I'm back. Steam is telling me that I should review Rare Tycoon 3. <laughs> Giggles. All right, I'm back. Oh, wonderful. Timed it both well, but I think I'm um, pretty sure my game's crashing, so. Alrighty, well, let me know when you're back in. You know, the Russia map is really interesting, but right now we can't really play that, so. So yeah, it's fine. Got some issues. Why not stream trains 2006? Because uh, my DVD player doesn't work, and I only have it on DVD, and I don't know where the DVDs are. All right. Uh, to Mean Metal Mark uh, saying, sorry, Mean Metal Mike saying that 475 is the best because 480. I do have to agree that a Mastodon highly underrated wheel arrangement, purely on the basis of the name for that wheel arrangement is Mastodon. Pretty fucking cool name. It is neat, yeah. You know, in, uh, I believe it was Columbia, they had three foot gauge Mastodons that had blind number one drivers. That's bizarre. Exactly. They're still fucking down there. There's like two or three that run. Out of all of the announced train games, which am I most looking forward to? Um, Probably Railroader. Railroader looks exciting. I don't know much about it. Um, Much about the other ones. I know Highball should theoretically be interesting, but they've got... Less shown progress that I've seen than uh, than Railroader, so am I gonna play Loco Shortline Operation again? <laughs> that one stumbles over words. Uh, yeah, probably at some point. Ooh, to Mean Metal Mike, say one thing negative about Norfolk and Western steam engines. Uh, gotta say, the whistles man, are awful. <laughs> I disagree with you on that one, but I. Am I wrong? I don't think I'm wrong. I don't know. Nineteen, like nineteen fifty-six or something stupid like that. The last engine they make, it's a USRA 080 knockoff. Come on, you couldn't build anything like superpower or whatever. You just had to build a little fucking switch engine. That's your like last word on steam locomotives. That's the best you can fucking do, Norfolk and Western. <clears throat> Why is Heist making ghost noises? Oh, because because reasons reasons do we have railway um, empire i do but i mean it's not single player or not multiplayer okay, so press the, the green okay cool. southeast uh, usa south, southeast usa yeah wait no shit sorry uh southeast usa 1845 so that gets us closest to having engines with lead trucks I didn't know Hank Hill was a whistle option. Whoa! 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 <clears throat> Admittedly, now I want that to be like a DLC for, you know, Railroads Online or some game. Whatever. That would be great. Let's see. Right. Haul as much cool. cotton to Chattanooga. Oh, God, this one. Okay, right. good the uh, logo typer worked this time all right where's, where's the oh. flying pig where's the flying pig jake christensen wants to know why uh geared engines don't have 80 inch drivers uh, but because that takes away the advantage of the gears if you yeah. make the, the lever ratio do that i mean you 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 do not have a good time I was just going to go with insert Bugs Bunny no meme. Oh, I mean, you know, you could do that. Oh, God, maybe I don't want to start in Chattanooga. It's very, very hilly looking. But that's where Choo Choo goes. Okay, we got the Eat Shit and Die Trying and the Runny Babbitt. <laughs> the Runny Babbitt. It's a bad day. You don't want to be the Runny Babbitt. Maybe, you know what? We'll do... I think this is what I did last time. I'm pretty sure I did Nashville to Huntsville last time, but you know what? I'm doing it again. Fucking full send, man. Who had the best 484 Northerns? Um, I hate to fall into, like, the UP nerd people, but the FEFs... The FEFs are pretty hot. They, they 
yeah, they just got the job done. Baldwin 060. Oh, man. The OG inside frame engines, question mark? How many cars do I want it to pull? Like four? Four. I thought the answer was like a car. Yeah, they can kind of go fast with some amount of cars. 69% full of lumber, boys. <laughs> Here we go. 69% of wood. <laughs> nice. The Jays were good northerns, too. Roller bearing rods are nice and everything. Yeah. In 2015, I, I uh, went and rode behind 611, and I rode behind it one day and then paced it the next day, and yeah, watching that engine do, like, f pacing it at 45, it's like, uh that, that thing wants to go faster. Those are good uh, engines. I love the GS4. I am biased, and I love the GS4s, but... I I agree with your bias there. And their Lima superpower, like, come on. Yeah. So, I had, like, my souls and dreams, whatever, crushed when I rode that train in 2015, because I was... Um, I was like in the the concession car or whatever and I was chatting with one of the crew guys and I was like, Yeah, I work on narrow gauge stuff in Colorado. We don't go faster than ten. This is awesome. Um and he was probably like, Yeah, whatever kid. But uh I asked him, Is running a big northern on the main line everything you would ever dream it is? And he just smiled and said, Yep, exactly what you think it is. <laughs> who cries oh, it's not the answer I want I wanted you to say it sucked Yeah. I want you to crush my dreams don't let me have them what if I want dollars to build train tracks come on game I need the monies look at, whoa, look at this train is about to rake in the cash holy crap 400 g's what is that? You we're gonna use four. we're gonna use those four hundred G's to build the Johnson City or Jackson City, not Johnson City. Hey man, I don't want to do, know what you want to do with your Johnson. Heard good things about the Santa Fe twenty nine hundreds. Oh, you know those are neat too. Yeah. Yep. So far as I know, that's like peak superpower. Yeah. OSP and S and 700 is pretty, too. I really like the 05s, too. I mean, they're not, like, the best or anything, but they're pretty. Yeah. Yeah. They're hot. Honestly, anything within a northern... I've never seen a northern that I looked at and went, nah. Yeah, that's... Yeah, that's... Yeah, that's it very... Is, very accurate. Look. You're hauling zero cars. Cool. No, I'm still hauling no cars because I bought a lumber mill. Thomas Perry, I promise I'm not trying to ignore you. You're just asking a bunch of questions that I have no opinions or thoughts on. Sorry. <laughs> I do not know the Durban and Greenbrier Valley Railroad. I do not have a favorite electric locomotive. I do not like green eggs and spam. I do not like green eggs and ham. There you go. <laughs> Most what the fuck steam locomotive design and why? Logging engines. Shutters. Yeah, anything lock. Oh, no, no, no. That Shea that they converted into a diesel. Well, those are that, those were strange. Yeah. Where they just, like, I don't know, hooked a probably, like, Liberty, whatever engine, something, something, army surplus to the drive shaft of a Shea and built a box over it and made Frank an engine. Made something you should talk to your pastor about. <laughs> yes, <laughs> precisely. Yeah. 
I don't know what this is, but you should talk to a priest. Could you hypothetically cook a peach pie in 491's firebox? I mean, hypothetically. Yeah. It cooked very quick. Okay, so Katie S. just asked a very interesting question. Uh, hi, so what's your opinion on the Willamettes? Because they're a better is... Shea, but they're still a Shea, which means they're bad. <laughs> they, they do seem to be better than, like, an actual Shea, but I, 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 they're still a vibrating disaster. But, like, they're, like, piston valves, and they're... Yes, they are, they are modernized, make more sense, geometrically set up better, uh, totally not Shea, brand Shea. Um, but they're still vibrating disaster logging engines. Someone call Rukar Nuts to post the uh, the clip of <laughs> the climax on the Mount Rainier Scenic. What I'm hearing is they're Dr. Pepper Shea. Kind of, yeah. They're better, but yeah, it's it's still what it is. Being better than an actual Shea isn't exactly difficult. It's true. Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty low bar. Slightly stronger, but way more efficient. I wouldn't be surprised. Go train, go. It's a low six O's. They're doing, they're doing their best. Is it still a million thousand billion dollars to buy industries? One million dollars, but apparently the coaches are still like stage coaches on wheels. So we're in that stage of the game. <laughs> I see. If I could go back in time, would I save the Uinta Mallies? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What kind of question is that? Is yeah, that duh, duh, duh. We, we like and wish we had those choo-choos. Yeah, that would actually be like, the Uinta Mally would be like great at the museum. <laughs> all the tractive effort and all the curves. Yeah, it's like, it looks at the curves and go, eh. Okay, the Western Maryland had, to me, Mental Mike, the Western Maryland was, like, super underrated as far as their superpower went. They had some really mean-looking articulateds. They had some interesting-looking Pacifics that had just, like, extended, extended smoke boxes. And, yeah, I've got to admit, they're, uh, yeah, the, the 484s, those were, those were sharp-looking engines. Two ten fours are neat. Yeah. CNS almost bought those mallets. Assholes. Yeah, I mean Probably would have made sense for the CNS because lots of power but light axle but lighter axle loading. Theoretically. You could have also just like made your track not terrible. I chatted with the uh, the conductor from my uh, my ride on the loop yesterday. Really nice guy. And it turns out he was actually one of the guys that I played where it's online with when I played at the the loop crew. And it was like I knew your voice sounded familiar when you were doing the spiel. But oh, man. <laughs> which one? Uh, Christian. I can't remember his list, his last name. But he does some pretty neat Lego stuff. Oh really? I didn't yeah. know that. He. Yeah, he uh, does. Seemed very intelligent about Colorado Central and CNS isms, uh, <laughs> and painted a lot more of a picture for how crazy some of that crap was, which was very fun. Well, somebody just asked which loco at the CRM is, um, uh, hardest on the track. I think the answer is peaches. Yeah, peaches are seven. Big Al or peaches. Either one. Well, 
Peach is, or seven right now because kadonk kadonk. Yeah, seven's the worst right now because it's got a giant flat spot on it. But Ghost Games, thank you for the uh, the super chat. You're exactly worth point one five of one idiot. All right, we'll give it to you. Three three cents. three tenths three tenths of an idiot. Is that as far as that fraction simplifies? Oh. <laughs> Three twentieths of an idiot. Three no, it's not three twentieths. Hurt. Oh, it is three twentieths. <laughs> Shows you that I'm a quarter of an idiot still here doing maths real good. That's what that's what they teach you in grad school, dude. <laughs> how to how to do some maths? How to do some fractions? Totally useless degree. <laughs> I want to buy this meat packing plant. Give me dollars. And we'll take all of your doll hairs. Why are they mad about my credit? I don't know. Give me more money. I will buy more stuff. <laughs> Any thoughts about the madness of railroading in Texas? Okay, so that is action. Heist, do you mind if I go down a tangent here? Go I go for it, bud. Viewers will find go do that. Who do that? You do so well. Yeah, okay, so madness of railroading in Texas, from a regulatory perspective, it's kind of absurd. Because during, like, the 19th century, a whole, basically before the ICC had was either a thing or had teeth, um, a whole bunch of states tried to set up interstate commerce commissions um, because the railroads were being dicks. Shocker. Saying, yeah, I mean, it's totally par for the course. Um, they were being like, yeah, we're not going to haul your loads from here to here, you know, from Dallas to Waco for less than Dallas to Houston. You know, Dallas to Houston is more profitable, so we're going to charge less for that because we want more people to be doing that, whatever. And the Texas Railroad Commission was actually created around the turn of the century by a guy, um, uh, Jim Hogg, who was the governor of Texas in the 1890s i'm trying to draw back memories from a high school history class um anyway yeah jim hogg was uh governor of texas and during his tenure if i remember correctly the texas railroad commission was established which actually was it was the only like basically texas was the only state that was effectively able to establish interest rate intrastate commerce regulations because it was kind of the only state that was big enough to, to do it because the supreme court basically um a bunch of other states like i think georgia and nebraska tried to set up their own intrastate commerce commissions but um the supreme court kind of smacked those down um because they were like well most of your commerce is actually interstate so it doesn't come under your jurisdiction but texas was big enough to do that and then through a variety of things, the Texas Railroad Commission ended up um, uh, governing um, oil and gas, like a lot of oil and gas regulations in Texas, starting with pipelines and stuff. And the Texas Railroad Commission uh, um, basically set world oil prices from like the 1940s through the 1960s. Um, and it was kind of basically in the pocket of the oil companies because it's a relative, seemingly insignificant uh, state elected board that nobody cared about except the oil companies. And it still exists. Um, it has, it's still called the Texas Railroad Commission. Um, there was an initiative in like 2014 or something to rename it to be the Texas Oil and Gas Commission. Um, but that got thoroughly smacked down. Um, it's still the Texas Railroad Commission. They no longer have any regulations to do with railroad. It's all about oil and gas. And yeah, so Texas Railroad regulation is a just weird, really weird thing. He's fun at parties, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> he actually he, he actually is fun at parties. Random accent, random viewer. Texas trains weird man. I don't know, man. When you're like big enough to like require that all your railroads be based or like all the companies be like corporate headquartered in Texas, weird stuff happens. Yeah. Yeah, because you had like the CNN, 
Um, you had uh, the CNS, which was a bitch of the um, CB and Q, and then you had the Fort Worth and Denver, which was a bitch of the uh, CNS, and the Fort Worth and Denver um, got a lot of hand-me-down equipment, and it's really strange when you're the bitch of a bitch, because <laughs> like you know, into the '60s, you're getting like, here's this really, you know, here's your new equipment. What is it? Modern heavyweight modernized heavyweight bullshit but it's pulled by an e-unit so that's cool confused hey man the texas zephyr was a thing or the denver zephyr was just a weird weird thing <laughs> best game ever hype yes tristan it's Tristan from the Discord. We'll take it. Oh, speed record. 23 miles an hour. Oh, man. Can leave it as the Memphis rocket. Please, ladies and gentlemen. Favorite East Coast paint scheme? Continue. Wait, sorry. Lazarus Long said, now I'm scared to ask what organ of government actually governs where we're in Texas, because I expect to discover that it's the, the, it's the Alcoholic Beverage Commission. So That first would be off, fitting, but you know. Yeah, it's fitting, but no. Actually, now the state of Texas, so far as I understand it, has no actual governance over railroads. However, um, Mark, uh, you know, um, we're going to whistle this. Woo whistle sound the uh, TABC. Um, so uh, Mark, you'll you'll appreciate this. The Texas Alcoholic Bev Beverage Commission um, is kind of a dick. Uh, it's a reason a lot of really good craft beer isn't sold in Texas. Because is it the reason that beer can't go east to Texarkana? Sorry. There's beer in Texarkana. They're thirsty in Atlanta. No, it's not because of that. Um, the TABC, basically, like, they have to um, approve every single beverage you bring in. They have to approve the label. They have to approve the bottle. It's a whole to-do, and a lot of companies just say, yeah, it's not worth it. So, micromanaging government agencies. Who would have thunk it? In Tejas. Have I heard of the Mark Twain Zephyr restoration? No. Could have smoked your report for me. Good. Thoughts on Metra? Metra is ridiculous. Um, I got to tour some of their facilities when I worked for BNSF. BNSF operates one of the uh, shops and maintains one of the lines for them. And what a neat operation. Um, and good God, they've got a lot of trains. I mean, <laughs> I'm used to my commuter rail outfit in Seattle that I worked for for a bit. Um, where we have 14 locomotives and Metro is like, yeah, we've got several hundred and it's like, holy crap. Yeah, they're all like 40s or whatever Frank and EMD thingy. Doesn't make sense, man. Eat shit and die. It's trying Cotton King. You've hauled two loads of cotton to Chattanooga. You're actually beating the game objective, man. It said that I've hauled zero loads of cotton to Chattanooga in my ledger, but it's fine. Is there any topic Leighton can't ramble on about? I'm sure there is one. Uh, I know very little about botany. <laughs> there you have it. Don't ask the man about plants. I will kill them. Uh, wait, sorry, to power to you. Yes, they did actually blow those trains up. They like put a bunch of dynamite in the cabs and actually made them go kaboom i don't know favorite, they did yeah favorite flower um daisies are cool i like daisies roses are nice i do like roses 
do I know anything about Japanese railway history? Um, it's three and a half foot gauge, and there's a surprising amount of stuff left. Of stuff left, and they really like the Pacifics. I don't know. I went to Japan, and I like saw four track overhead wire mainline three and a half foot gauge electrified shit, and I was very confused. Is all their railroad three and a half foot gauge? Everything but the Shin uh, everything but the Shinkansen. Really? Yeah, so it's like a it's an interesting game you can play about like the different um like from a colonial perspective, um you can figure out what um geopolitical entity was influential in which area by what gauge it was. So like South America, you can see Monroe Doctrine there because a lot of stuff was three foot gauge. Um that was a common American gauge. Uh Japan is three and a half foot gauge. That's because a lot of the early engineers they had come over to build stuff was, uh, they were British. So three and a half foot gauge was their like de facto narrow gauge that wasn't two foot gauge or 11, or sorry, one foot 11 and five eighths of an inch because the Fastiniog is weird. Um, and then like the French and the Germans were meter gauge. So a bunch of West African shit is meter gauge. Weird. So, colonialism represented through track gauge. Hmm. Yeah, the more you know. Mean Metal Mike asks, favorite British steam locomotives, which is, again, a, a topic that I know you can ramble on about that I can't, so. <laughs> I don't know my British locomotives that well. We need to get you over to Britain. Can I go hang out with my doppelganger, my, my immortal enemy? Yeah. Or, yeah. or best friend. Lori's Mechanical Marvels. Hope you're watching. Yeah. Hey, Lori. Let's hang out. You want to come play with a K-37? Yeah, seriously. Come over. All right. I've done the Leighton Moreland thing. I've bought an industry. Yeah. Um, the eat shit and die trying is... It's doing all right. No, you're more... You're decently profitable, yeah. You did better than my, you did better than I did in fiscal year eighteen forty nine. So, <laughs> okay. Seems I should stream with Leighton Moore. Heist. He seems to cover quite a few of my railroading nerd weaknesses. Yes, yes. Mo most of my railroad nerd friends get hit all of the history things that I know nothing about. I get yeah. the mechanic side. They get the history side. Yeah. Do I understand how valve gear works? Conceptually, yes. Actually, yeah. I mean, valve gear is confusing. I only sort of vaguely understand it. I still don't understand Stevenson. I, I get where it's coming from, and I understand that it works. I'm just confused at how it actually works as well as it does. Right. I didn't do well enough in dynamics to understand that. What, you can't design a fucking role, uh, amusement park? Guess not. <laughs> I'm gonna need, a, like, a wrist rocket to fucking hit you with a lime from here. But yes, TT gauge is, in fact, the ideal small gauge. That's all I'll say to that one. We we heard from, uh, you know, Dusty's friend from, Dusty's friend from the cog. <laughs> yes, Jimmy, is he here? He is. He did, he did oh. in fact, appear. <laughs> the wild Jimmy appears. He needs to be our, our last quarter idiot for the, the stupid podcast. Cause... Hey, when you when are you appearing to play, play like Railroad Tycoon 3 or something? Get Jimmy on stream and we just need to virtually throw limes at him. Or actually, is that can we set up like a servo with a remote for that? That would be great. That, that would be the content that people truly crave. And the Union Railroad O-10-2s, the kings of the switchers. O-10-2? Yeah, they were purpose-built switch engines, the Union Railroad. I think they were, like, on the DM and IR or something, but they primarily just, like, switched out big-ass trains of iron ore cars. What does the two get you at that point? Giant firebox. Okay. 
you have all the tractive effort slash ginormous firebox. Okay. I guess. <laughs> yeah. I didn't say it made sense, but it worked. Come on, trans deliver. They're raising the price. Citrus content might be risky for YouTube. We can't start a bar fight on YouTube. You say that, but... I don't know, man. You know, I should probably build a Chattanooga since that's like... We're going to repair the old Sumter Valley rear grand switcher set of again. The 50. Yeah, yeah, we'll eventually deal with 50's clutch. It's just yeah. not, not anything anyone wants to do because 50 is the most annoying locomotive on the face of this earth yeah we need a, a short angry german man <laughs> yeah and also bo needs to come back and fix it yeah so for those who have never been in the 50 when it's operating mark you've been in the 50 when it's moved right yes the loudest thing i've ever experienced and i've experienced a lot of loud things rock and roll yeah the way that i describe it to people is imagine putting a stock pot on your head and then giving 50 kinder kindergartners all hammers. Yeah. And then the horn sounds like, me. Um, and, and you can't hear the horn when you're in the cab because the cab is, I mean, it's just the loudest thing in the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, Jimmy's comment. The 50 was the fastest. Hey, this is awesome, dude. Hey, this sucks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, at that point, yes. Oh, man, yeah. this is going to be so cool. Oh, God, this is awful. Yeah, that's that. That sums up a 50. You're like, oh, man, this is so cool. We're going to get to ride in this stick shift loco. Oh, my God, make it stop. Why? Why did people create this? Why is it so loud? Lol, you haven't seen the Sumter Valley wood comb. It will literally shoot flame out of exhaust stacks. I mean, a lot of diesels will do that. A lot of steam yeah. engines will do that if you let Justin Cardis touch them. Ooh. Love you, Justin, if you're out there. Yeah. <laughs> Entire yeah. can of lighter fluid into the firebox, including the can. I mean, that just sounds like a good recipe for a clinker. It's a recipe for fire out the stack. <laughs> I mean, hopefully it snows this year for Polar Express and we can do that for memes. That would be a meme. But we should not send fire out the stack. That's a bad idea. Yeah. Like I said, hopefully it snows. It's 5 foot 4 short enough to operate the 50. No, we we're mostly poking poor fun at our friend Bo, who is rather short and uh, is, is kind of the person who is the most experienced with the 50. The thing is, the 50, the cab is actually spacious. Yep. Yeah, there's not much in there besides, like, a couple seats and some levers sticking out of the floor. It was lacquer thinner, not lighter fluid. My bad, Jimmy. I'm glad somebody else remembers. Cog railways are neat. They, I'd say they have their ups and their downs. Out. Out. Oh, good. A porn bot. Don't click the porn bot links. I can't oh. alt tab to deal with that. Yeah. <laughs> Dies. <laughs> Is Tristan still here? Tristan, help. We don't know what we're doing here. so many tool and die things in here in Nashville. None of them make any money. Presumably because there's not any place bringing them iron. Yeah. Yeah. Do we get a lime emoji? I mean... I should, yeah, we should probably get a lime emoji. I need to add more emojis. I think there's a couple more rooms for the... Uh, 
or more room for the conductors and uh, brakemen to get them. Yeah. Yeah. Favorite Virginia and Truckee locomotive. Uh, I'm going to go with not Dayton because the throttle kept getting stuck open the weekend we were there. Yeah, that was, that was a bit of a vibe. Yeah, that's like a, what do you mean you kept running the engine vibe? Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's probably fine. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I didn't know anything about the VNT until we went out to Nevada for that event, and now it, the VNT is just, why did they make the standard gauge? <laughs> yeah, 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 I can agree with that. And just from the engines I saw, I mean, I would probably, I guess I would pick Inyo if I had to pick one, just because it's like my first, like, oh, this is just a stereotypical 440, like, this is very good. Um, yeah. But that's like, that's all I know, like, I don't know the full complement or smattering of of, uh, locomotives from the VNT to like really do them justice so yeah no. I would say with the VNT it's just like what do you mean these all still exist you honestly wish you had the Rio Grande 50 back on the Sumter Valley no you don't you really don't no one wants that locomotive to exist yeah did you not hear us talking about how it's the loudest thing in the world literally everybody's gotten rid of it that could... nobody's had it for that the people that have had it for the longest have been us, and we haven't run it. Precisely. Like, it was, it, it went to us, or sorry, it went from the Sumter to the Museum, or sorry, to the Grand, and then it really wasn't at the Grand for that long, and then it went to Roaring Cramp, <laughs> and then, yeah, it went from Roaring Cramp to us, and then it sat for a long time. The VNT was so tight, there was an XUP440 that couldn't run there, and they had to send it back. That is hilarious. What? That is hilarious. It's wings in the chat. <laughs> Why am I not using dining cars on my trains? Extra weight, and I'm not regularly hauling enough passengers to make a difference, I don't think. Yeah. This car, I mean, this car would have been helped by it, but it's just kind of random-ish, so... Yeah. Dining cars kind of only make sense if you're doing, like, trains that are just, like, straight passenger trains. Elsewise, cabooses are where it's at because marginally more reliability. Mm -hmm. Somebody asked if I've been to Silverwood. Yes, I have. It's a neat, neat place. Neat theme park. Neat choo-choo. Cowcatcher really? Studios. Baker vs. Wall Shirts Valve Gear. Uh, Baker is just better. Wall Shirts Valve Gear. Changed my mind. Go steal the 71 from Central City so it's just not rotting next to a casino. Um, Leighton, say it together with me now. Restore no. it. Oh. Oh. Restore it and run it on the main line. <laughs> I mean that was that was a good that was a good other option, but uh, no. Our no on there, despite the fact that it is a Clear Creek branch engine, and it would be really cool and really historic to the museum. No. Yeah, we don't need another 280. If we're gonna, if we need, if we get another 280, let's build a fucking 70. So we have an oil burner. That would be neat. Yeah. More 280s. All the 280s. I mean, it's a pretty good wheel arrangement. Not, I mean, there's, there's not much to mince words about there. New Bill Uenamali. I mean, I mean that would be fun. Yeah. Break out your checkbook. Yeah, that, that sounds like a fun SolidWorks project. Yeah, anyone got 10 million lying around? No, 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 you could build that engine for a lot less. You could build it for less than that, yeah. Could, probably five million, maybe. Assuming that there are plans. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 
we got a request for Khan there. Request for Khan? Oh, is Dapper here? Friends from so long ago. Brett is presently in uh, New Orleans doing work things. Yeah. Or, or not work things. I can't remember. I don't know. I, I'm not his keeper. It wasn't my turn to watch him today. <laughs> I don't know. Last message I got from Brett was him, like, at a cafe with a St. Charles streetcar in the background. So, I don't know. Dapper, we have, we have many trains. Child of Israel. They're, they're all the same train. And they're all very jank looking because this game is 19 years old. But, you know. Yeah. Thoughts on Garrett Locomotive. You know, Mark, I don't think I've ever actually heard your thoughts. Weird. Like, Weird, and why would you like your adhesion to be worse by having your fuel and water sources be your primary thing of adhesion slash making a bridge that goes in between your adhesion? Yeah. They just weird. They work, but they weird. Yeah, I guess if you have to engage beam theory to design a locomotive, you're doing something wrong. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh that's um that's gonna be a boundary for me. Don't don't engage beam theory if you're designing a locomotive. That's that's a very fair boundary. Okay. Somebody, uh, Louis and Nashville Railroad, Louisville Nashville Railroad, Railroad fan, 1982, just asked, "What are the pluses of Southern Valve Gear?" I don't. Really... I don't know enough about Southern Valve Gear to know, but all to know is that it beats the crap out of the track because of the way that it slams downward force. <clears throat> yeah, my my understanding is it's just like improved Southern, or air quotes improved Southern. It. it they're asking about Southern. Or sorry, air quotes improved Baker. That's not improved Baker. Baker's like the best and Southern's far from the best. I don't know. All right. Like, we've, we found I'll, something he doesn't know about, ladies and gents. There's lots I don't know about. That's fair. Could DSP and P191 be restored to operation? I mean, anything can be restored, but 191 would need a new boiler, which means it's really not feasible. Say it with me, Mark. Mm. No. <laughs> Why is Baker better? Baker's better because it's all pinned connections rather than wall shirts having the sliding die block and link. If you have square surfaces that go back and forth and do a backy forthy thing in a sine wave pattern, for their position, if you were to graph it, the square become a not square in a weird way, uh, and round pins just wear like round pins, and then you replace them with round pins instead of making a weird square part again and replacing weird cast strange guides and things. Um, so, yeah, it's basically just better for maintenance over the long term, but otherwise, like functionally, they're almost equivalent. Um, so, that's why Baker's better. Why are the K4s the best Pacifics? I see the Keystone has entered the chat. The answer is no. Runny Babbitt is Cotton King. This is not fair, sir. <laughs> I have hauled 13 loads of cotton to Chattanooga. I've only apparently hauled seven. Where are you getting all this cotton from? Uh, Mississippi. Well, that's not fair. You're in Mississippi, too. You got there first. Well, I don't know why they're not picking up stuff. I don't know. Trains and economics and loads and things and stuff, man. Something dark side, something, something. Uh... I don't know, man. I just work here. <laughs> Sir, this is a Wendy's. <laughs> uh... We serve food here, sir. Yeah. It's connected to Jackson, Mississippi, so. Anybody Why are the T ones the best four eight fours? I mean not wrong. The K stand for on the four ninety one stands for Mikado. The K in Mikado. 
thought it was MacArthur. <laughs> well, it depends on people. There's no K in MacArthur. Yeah, but we don't want to talk about those people. <laughs> Baton Rouge wants people to connect their choo-choos to it. It's where I just drag track across the land. Ooh, favorite streamlined steam locomotive. That's a very good question. 4449 sold. Done. I am, a, I am a West Coast simp. You can put that on your meme pages, those of you listening. Any more chip post hype train? See that one in the morning? Yeah. I have yet to be memed, so... Um... Yeah, no, I, I have to agree with you there. Daylight. Or either the Daylight or the AC9. Just the articulated monster with the semi streamlining. That's that's a that's a that's a choice. That's a choice you can make. It's not elegant. Like the daylight has an elegant factor to it. The AC9 very much not so much, but you know it's fine. The the AC9 is Mongo. Can confirm. Getting some four four O's going, man. It's happening. Yep. Have you seen or heard about a locomotive that made you go, why did they make it narrow gauge? <laughs> Stairs at uh, the rear grand. <laughs> Yeah, I would say anything bigger than a K-27. Pretty much. Yeah, the K-37s. Why? Yeah. This is a standard gauge engine. Why are you doing this? You mean to tell me you built a locomotive pa more powerful than 99.99% of all locomotives that run in the United Kingdom, and you put it on three-foot gauge tracks? <laughs> Big yeah. choo choo. Firing 491. Man, that's a lot of firebox. Literally firing anything else. Man. That's not a lot of firebox. It's <laughs> easy. Yeah, my exact words the first time I saw a K36 firebox was that's it. Really? That's 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 all the firebox that's in there? Stop being Cotton King. You're not allowed to be Cotton King. I've only hauled one more load. This is yeah, not a uh... suit and a tie. <laughs> Basically. Yeah, Northern Isle brought up a very good point here that wooden bridges can't be upgraded. That is one of my few real pet peeves with this game. Yeah, I was realizing that I was trying to lay it, and it was like it gave me a price to double track it, but then it won't, wouldn't double track it. Yeah. Yeah. Building too fast for the game to register my clicks. That's how you know we're in crunch mode here. Yep. Party like it's 2002, man. Gonna buy me a meat packing plant. I bought two industries and they're really not, not doing that much for me. So I guess I'm making money consistently. So maybe I should not complaining but you know yeah man steady return who do you think's gonna end up with the white pass shovel noses someone god I have no idea 
no freaking clue. I don't think the DNS wants them, so I, like... They've got, like, six of the Alco DL 535s? I thought they had four. Did they have six? I thought they bought more. I don't know. They've got a lot of them. They have a fair number of them. Making the Baton Rouge to Little, Little Rock train the long way because maybe it'll make money. Oh, no, I don't have any money, so I guess I won't. That's funny. I ain't got no money. Laugh till I die. Opinions on Great Northern Railway? I like the Great Northern Railway. I used to work at the Interbay shop that was a 1929 Great Northern shop, which is cool. Ooh, making a curse bet for Georgetown Loop or Dollywood to get the shovel noses. Oh, wow. God, you know Georgetown would end up with them because they need more diesels that don't run. <laughs> Oof. I mean... I didn't, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, not to be mean to the poor Georgetown Loop. They're dealing with some sadness, but good God. We were there, and it's like they had a plea out for needing money because their choo-choos are having problems, and it's like, wait, th there's like there's like six deep, like probably six diesels on property and only one of them runs. Yeah, their choo-choos always have problems. That's a joke. They're like the Hulk. We're always broke. <laughs> Basically. Secret, man. I always need money. Well, I keep buying locomotives and they keep seeming to have cargo to haul, so that helps. <laughs> Marty, I'm not listening to my own soundtrack while playing another game. This is actually the soundtrack to this game. Yes, I, I drove inspiration from this one, so I'm not surprised that you think it's the same one. Maybe Cumber isn't high wings. Um, I don't disagree with your idea that the Cumbers and Tolta get the uh, get the shovel noses. I think having diesel road engines in times of fire danger is a good backup for them. But yeah, it remains to be seen if they're gonna if they're gonna jump on that. Empire Builder scheme is pretty. Yeah. I think the the Lowy scheme, the Main Streeter, whatever it is scheme, the the green on green one, I think that one is highly underrated. Do I have to destroy the wood bridge to upgrade it? Yep. Does that screw with the chi of all of my trains that are trying to run over it? It will, yes. You have to like time it such that none of them are going over it. Okay, but it won't like deroute everything else. No, it won't. They'll just be sitting there going, what the fuck? Okay. Where is our train? Why is this like this? We don't like this. Something, something, anthropomorphizing trains. <laughs> something, something. Yeah, not that we ever do that. Never. Never, never, never. My credit rating's gone down. Aww. Cries in having 29 trains. I'm up to 42. Good lord. No wonder you're winning. He's just got more trains. Favorite yep. livery on an F7. I really like Black Widow. I think Black Widow's badass. Black Widow is pretty slick. It, it's hard to beat Black Widow. I mean, Santa Fe War Bonnet is freaking classic, but it's so classic that, like, it's too classic. Yeah, that is just, like... Okay. Santa Fe War Bonnet, that's Coke. That is just, like, it's, it's always a good answer. That's fair, yeah. But Black Widow is a whiskey Coke. Ooh. <laughs> I like that. And then I look at the, the Intermountain a F3 ABA set I have on my mock Sunbeam um, that's on the wall 
next to me. And it's like, yeah, no, Black Widow. This is a good answer. I, I don't know, know you had a set in Black Widow. That's nice. But it's a good answer. Mean Metal Mike, Canadian Pacific D10 class. Uh, this post brought to you by Rapido Trains. Please pre-order. If you want to make these, please. I don't know anything about the Canadian Pacific. Someone's asking what I think about it, and it's like, okay, they're Canadian, and they chose Pacific. There you go. They, yeah, you're... you're they choice. in Canada. Yeah. Your Coke or Pepsi of Canadian railroading. Canadian Pacific, Canadian National. I don't know which one's Coke. I don't know which one's Pepsi. <laughs> yeah, one of them might be RC, and one of them might be Pepsi. We don't know. Yeah. Hey, Warbonnet on the F7, you can be basic. Like we said, it's Coke. It's always good. Yeah, it's always a good answer. I don't know what Nate's H6G is. I, yeah, I don't, I don't get what an H6G is. Washing machine <laughs> revealed. They've made a machine that can wash your clothes. What? I thought that was just a very intricate cocktail maker. Quit being the Cotton King. Oh, I've dumped a lot more loads in now, but... That's a very personal statement there, sir. <laughs> well, you know. Hey, man. Hey, man. Okay, why is the chat going talking about Amtrak pooches? I That's a know. very, very niche electric thing to go down the rabbit hole on. Well, your niche uh, energy has apparently invaded the chat. Speaking of Heyman's, I got to have lunch with Heyman the other day. He was at the museum on Friday. Back from the grave? No, not that Heyman. The other Heyman. Oh, oh, oh uh, Dave. Yeah, Dave. Dave's not here, man. Dave's not here. No, Dave was here. It was fitting that he showed up on the day that I got my guitar and he sat there and listened to me play it in the shop for like an hour. <laughs> Mods are asleep post toasters. <clears throat> the AEM7 gang has woken up wings. Apparently. Your profits are much larger than me, sir. I'm going to lose this one again, too. And this didn't even have, like, a money objective. It was just move a bunch of cars. Take all the things over here. And I've just got a thousand trains that don't make any money. And one of them is out of water. Why is it out of water? Oh, because it's approaching the water plug now. Yeah, why is the water always gone? Do we have an SP6 champ at the museum? No, not anymore. Yeah, that's we had kind of we had one quote unquote on loan from someone. Something something may or may not have been not on something loan. something Stromboli something something. It wasn't on loan. It was stolen. Something something. Yeah. Anyways. Found it in the collection. <laughs> yeah. Something something. Ask our therapists. Yeah, pretty much. Do you guys have any unpopular opinions on the DNRGW narrow gauge? Oh, I'm sure we have plenty of unpopular opinions. Like, they were green, man. I mean, they were green gobbles. Um, okay, here's my unpopular opinion. Why the hell, in the 20s, did the Grand just, like, rebuild all of this rinky-dink wooden shit? It's like you're getting new modern engines. Why not get new modern equipment? Get steel-framed cars. Why are you wasting your time? I don't know if that's an unpopular opinion. I think that's just an opinion that makes sense. I mean, yeah, I'm talking about, like, getting rid of, like, most of the narrow gauge equipment that survived. <laughs> well, I mean, no. I mean, it would have made sense. What's your unpopular opinion? My unpopular opinion about the Grand? About the Grand narrow gauge. Grand narrow gauge? I don't know. I think... I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I have an unpopular opinion. I'm trying to think. Why 
Why did you build the K-28s? Why not get something bigger and better? Yeah, why didn't you build the L-101, you dirty bastards? Yeah. Probably because it would have just, like, eaten every single locomotive facility they had. Probably. I mean, that that's, like, an interesting thing, though, to, like, think of in the context of, like, precision schedule railroading. You know, big problem with PSR is having frames that are too long for sightings. That's true. If you have a locomotive that's too long for any of your facilities, that's a royal pain in the ass. Should they have converted the line from Anito to Durango to standard gauged? No. No. <laughs> Given my current job and previous experience working with steam, have I had any experience working diesels of any size, at least compared to PB at CRM? I mean, I don't really have that much hands-on experience working on a, on diesels. I mean, I was a manager at the, the roundhouse for BNSF and, and occasionally did a couple things. Um, game freeze? Crashed on me. All right. That's that. I mean, that means I win because um, I'm still in the game and Leighton loses because he delivered more cotton, but he's no longer in the game. Yeah, you're you're the de facto wiener. So. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Sorry, somebody said the infamous toilet story. But it's one of your viewers, so I think he already knows. Yeah, I'm assuming, yeah, he's watched the Dear All Valley episode where we talk about the SD40 full of poop. <laughs> all right well yeah i think that that's about does it for me it's about my bedtime but look for a couple yeah. videos this week folks uh I, I finally got ahead and i've got like two coming out wednesday friday and then i gotta get ahead on an edit for the next three-quarter idiot show so know. anyways 165 viewers so yeah that means a hundred five people don't have lives well you know we don't either so we'll join them thanks yeah. for watching everyone this is a lot of fun always a lot of fun and uh let us know in the comments what you thought and uh let us know if there's other games you'd like us to try out or other forums in which you'd like to just quiz Leighton on random railroad things because he enjoys pontificating about them so <laughs> anyways thanks so much guys have a good night i'm jumping off night. Railroad Tycoon 3 won't minimize. We're still live. Okay, here it goes. Bye!